Hey friends, this is Brother Anthony Wynn. And Michael Wynn. Hey, God bless y'all. Mike, I'm going to drop one on you today. You know how I like to look for Jesus in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Yes, sir. So yes, this sir. is, I'm, I'm, we're going to enjoy this. I found some new pictures of Jesus, types in Old Testament shadows, then some new about what his blood purchased for us. So start reading. Okay, tell me where I'm at. Genesis 37 and 26. 30, chapter 37, verse 26. Yes. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? How far you want me to go out? 37, 38. Okay. Come and let... Oh, skip to there? No, yeah, read 27 too. Uh, come and let us sell him to Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. One more. And there passed by Midianites, a uh, merchantman, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. Do you remember some of the types that you just taught your youth game changers about? Jesus being a type of Joseph, Joseph being a type of Jesus. Do you remember some of them? Uh, I know you have a master list. That's unreal. He's hated. They both were hated by their brothers. They, uh, they both were sold by those closest to them. They both were innocent but found guilty. They both, uh, Jesus lost his robe, Joseph lost his coat, and they forgive those who hated them. This thing goes on and on. So Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Read, read out of Zechariah. Okay. Chapter 11, verse 12 and 13. And I said unto them, If ye think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized at of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Now this is a prophecy. And then hundreds of years later, Judas sells Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Judas takes the money back, throws it down. And you know what they do with it? They buy a potter's field. The, the, he prophesied right here, cast it down to the potter's house. Uh -huh. They cast the money down. They bought a, 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 a potter's field. Uh, Matthew twenty six fourteen. Then one of the twelve called Judas went unto the chief priest and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they converted with him for thirty pieces of silver. From that time he sought opportunity to betray him. I've pondered and I've searched and I've wondered for years uh, why why didn't uh, why would it twenty six pieces of silver, thirty two pieces of silver, or forty pieces of silver? Why why wasn't it twenty nine pieces of silver? I look for this. Listen to this. Jesse, this, this. Exodus 21, 32. If an ox shall push a manservant or maidservant. And you look up that word push. It means to gore, to kill, or to destroy. Exodus 21, 32. If, a man, if an ox shall push a manservant or maidservant. So that meant this person's a slave. He's owned by somebody. So the owner's putting a value on his slave. We were servants of sin before Jesus bought us. Mm -hmm. And the owner put a price. He shall give unto their master 30 shekels of silver. So, so we were a servant, and to get us free cost him 30 pieces of silver. Is that not good? That's, <laughs> That's, good. A, price. That's a price he valued us at. And uh, uh, read us just a little bit. Start Matthew 27 and 1. We won't read it all. 27 and 1. Yeah. And when the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders to the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Just keep reading. Saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasure because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and brought them with them in the potter's field to bury strangers in. Exactly what Zechariah said. So, so I, I've looked for this for years. And I, I, I preached on this Sunday night. And... Uh, Wherefore, that blood was called the 
field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that was spoken of by the prophet. So now listen to this. I did, I've done I've, for years. I've done these studies. What is a potter's field? It has two meanings, two almost opposite meanings, but it also can mean the same thing. One meaning, it is a piece of land, probably about an acre. It's a piece of land where this special clay was found on. So you've got clay out. You're a potter maker. That's mm -hmm. your trade. There's 10 potter makers in town. It's all going together and buy this piece of land. But not only you, your daddy did it. Your grandpa did it. Your great-grandpa did it. So this piece of land has been dug into pottery for the last uh, 200 years. There's ruts in it. There's ditches in it 70 feet deep. They've, they've been digging this clay out. This piece of land is of no value. It's, it's worthless. It's of no value. So so they, they got strangers and they got people that weren't Jews. Where, where, we, gonna bury, where we gonna bury the beggar at? Where we gonna bury him? We're not gonna build, bury him up in our, our nice cemeteries, our, our nice pl uh, graveyards. They're gonna take him out to the potter's field to a piece, a piece of ground that's useless and they're gonna bury him. The second definition of potters, say, say there's 20 potter makers in town. You make 10 vessels a day two of them cracks. Now when something cracks, they can grind it. They couldn't grind stuff up back then. If two a day cracked, that's 10 a week. Uh, 10, 10 a week is uh, 500, let's see, 10 times 50, 500 a year. Mm -hmm. uh, t in, in, in 10 years, then in 20 years, you got 20 guys doing this. I counted up. You, in not long, you'll have 96,000 pieces of pottery if you got 20 makers in just 10, 20 years. They, they, they bust them up a little bit. They take them out there and throw them in the potter's field. And they're just there. And everybody just sees garbage. They took the 30 pieces of silver and they bought the potter's field. The Bible said, listen to this, the Bible said, the Bible said that Jesus found a treasure in the field. He found a treasure. What field was it? It was a potter's field. He found a treasure in the field. And when he did, he bought the field to get the treasure. So I was that treasure and those old broken potters. Everybody looked at me and said, Anthony Wynn won't ever. My school teacher said, said, you, you uncles are drunks, you, you, you grandpa's a bootlegger, said, you ain't never, you ain't never gonna be nothing. You ain't gonna be a preacher like your daddy. You ain't gonna not nothing. I was in the potter's field. And now here's what I like. Jesus not only bought the treasure, he bought the field. He bought all my stuff. <laughs> he paid for it all. <laughs> Is that not good? He bought, now, here, here's, here's, how, here's how we got to talk a lot about on the night we're praying for addiction. He, 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 he found the treasure and he hid it till he bought the field. And then he went and got it. So we got to pray God, hide this treasure from a heart attack, from an overdose, from an aneurysm, from a car wreck. God, hide this treasure. Hide your loved ones, God. God, hide our loved ones. Hide our families. Hide the, they're in the field. They're in the potter's field. Do you remember what? Uh, remember what uh, da David said? Where was it David said? Uh, he's picked me up out of the Mary Clay. He's put my, he's picked my feet up out, out of the Mary Clay, set my feet up on a rock, established my goings. The potter's field. Yeah. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. See the, 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 the ruts in it? He brought me up. I was in the potter's field. That's where I was. Look. This changes the way we can look at everything. Does it make, is this not good? You know, Jesse, is this not good? There are so many ways you can, you can look at this as this is where I was. You can look where at this. Where the world as, was, we all was. This is the mess I was in, and he bought all my mess. He bought every part of me to save me. But also, I, I've been guilty of sometimes praying for people in fear. And this shows me anybody that we're praying for that we love, we, we're praying to a God that loves them more. So we're praying like, oh, God, you look at look at what I'm seeing. Look at what I'm seeing. And God's saying, I already see a treasure and said, I've already hid this treasure. We we got to pray with more belief in this guy. This, this king of kings and Lord of Lord loves us. So history says they had these deep ruts where they got the clay out for 200 years. Some of these ruts are 70 feet deep. And they just throw this broke clay in these 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 ditches. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit out of the merry clay. And he set my feet up on a rock and he established my goings. He got me out of the potter's field. Just a broke vessel. Now, 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 th this is a little different. This is this is what you and Jesse need to teach your youth a lot. The Lord told to Jeremiah, he said, go down to the potter's house. He said, I've got a revelation. I've got a, a, a type I want to show you. I've got a parable. 
I want to show you. Jeremiah went down and he's watching the man spin. And he said to Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, don't the potter have power over the clay to make it as he will? And, and Jeremiah said, and the, the vessel that he made was mired in the potter's hand. And he made it again another vessel. Long as that vessel is soft, it's remakeable. But once it gets hard, and I never saw this before, once it gets hard and throw down in the field, I thought it was over. But man, that master, what my, he said, I see a treasure. I can take a little broke piece of clay there that, that she ain't been to church in 22 years. And I can heal her and mend her. And so this, this, I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay, yes. Being soft, does that mean being humble? What does it mean to be soft? Pliable, workable, able to listen, willing to yield. Uh, we, we get it. This will this answer your question. We get in a real good Holy Ghost service and we're just, just saturated. And here we are just, 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 we just, we just in heaven. We're, praying, we're hearing angels cry, holy, holy. And you look around this guy's wondering, man, I got to get up and go to work. He's in the same rain. The, when it rains on a rock, it's dry in five minutes. But when it rains on that good soft dirt, it's wet for two days. Same rain, two different, same rain side by side, two different vessels. One hard. It up in one you, you get you get hard. You get hard. The spirit of God don't affect you. It just it's a temporarily. That that's the reason. I used to call them leaky vessels. They get in church and they get such a move, and it runs out. But I'm not even sure it ever gets in. I think it just runs off and they dry. So I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure they're real leaky vessels. I think they they just get wet and quick as they get back in life it dries and come back and get wet again. But it never changes. This gets inside of you, it changes you. Mm -hmm. but the, the, the Bible, the Spirit of the Lord. This is deep stuff. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, Arise, go down to the potter's house. Jeremiah 18, 1. Go down to the potter's house and I will cause thee to hear my words. I went down to the potter's house. Behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was mired in the hand of the potter. This is something I like to think about. Who's your favorite basketball player? I really like him watching Anthony Davis play. What what does he make a year? I think twenty two million. Twenty two million. A basketball in his hand. Now you put a hammer in his hand, he probably won't make twelve dollars an hour building. <laughs> you put fired. a computer in his hand, he'd probably get fired. You put a well, I feel the Lord now. You put a, a baseball in his hand and they probably won't even make a team, but you put a basketball in his hand. So so the, I went down to the potter's house to behold he brought a work on and the vessel that he made of clay was mired. It, it had a problem. But look whose hands it's in. Any Somebody watching this, it's got a problem. The devil says, look at your problem. Look at you. Tell the devil, look whose hand I'm in. If I, the devil finds in your hand, my life will be over. But I'm in the hand of the master. I feel the Lord touching somebody out there now. Hallelujah. I know this is life and we got storms and valleys and you got problems, but friend, you're in good hands. You're in the hands of the lily, the valley, the creator, Emmanuel, the prince of peace, the bread of life. The Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. God's making us another vessel. He's not through with us. He sees a treasure in you. He sees something valuable and talk to him about it, Mike. He's a treasure. You were talking about value. I, I love to look up collectibles, and you you know as well as I do a base a baseball that was in the hands of Hank Aaron, a baseball that was in the hands of Babe Ruth. There's no number you can put on some of those, and then we, we look at ourselves and we measure ourselves so wrong versus how God measures us. Wow. We look at we measure people so wrong versus how God measures people. You know what? We can literally be our worst critic. And then God so can good. look at us and see. And I'm, I'm afraid that you can correct me right here and help me out. I'm afraid sometimes we criticize ourselves so hard and we judge ourselves so hard. That stops us from being pliable. It limits the, the mobility of what we can let God do you're, with us. you got to be right. you got to be right. Because we can say, I, if you look at Moses, God, God was telling him, I can never do this. Argued with God six times in a row. I can't do this. I can't do this. That's good. That's powerful. And it limited God to the point where he had to give him air. That's good. Wow. We got it. Yeah, this is, this is speaking to me. This is powerful word. He saw treasure. Just saw treasure. 
Just a zip, zip pull together. Oh house, oh house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Notice three things about that field. It was of little value. It was a dump for broken vessels. It was a burying place for strangers and the poor. And it was a place that had been dug out. There was nothing of value left. And I think that's where most of us was when Jesus found us. Of little value, everything good had been dug out. Just a dump in place for broken vessels. Strangers and poor people were, were buried. It was I, I was bought with blood money. The field was bought with blood money. Mm -mm -mm. Well, how did, how did that go? We had no use for this blood money. We can't keep this blood yeah. money. They weren't allowed to put it back in the treasure. Then in Acts it said, Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Jesus, which was God to them that took Jesus. He was numbered with us. He obtained part of this ministry. Listen, listen to this. Listen to this. Somebody write this down. Go read this. Matthew 13, 43, 44. We done said it. Then shall the righteousness shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their Father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Somebody's hearing what the Spirit's saying right now. Somebody's spirit is hearing. Somebody's heart's hearing. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hid in a field. A treasure hid in a field. What field is he talking about? I think it's a potter's field. Like a treasure hid in the field, which when a man hath found, he hideth. And for joy thereof. Oh, here it is, here it is. For the joy set before him endured the cross, which a man hideth, and for joy thereof goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Why did Jesus go to the cross for the joy set before him? He, he hid me till he went to the cross. Listen to that. For which when a man hath found, he hideth. And for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath. And he buyeth. He bought the whole field. He didn't just buy the treasure. He bought the whole field. That was a potter's field. I feel the Lord speaking to somebody. Telling you, you're, you're a value in the kingdom of God. You're important. Enemy told you you're nothing. Jesus looked at you and he saw treasure. Man. It, it amazes me. I, one of the things that touches us on a, on a human level. God would buy every part of us to save the treasure. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. And... and Everybody says this, so I'm just going to repeat it. But he didn't just say, I'm the God of Abraham, my friend, and I'm the God of Isaac, the well digger. He said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I love my friend. I love the well digger. I don't mind dealing with this mess. I'm his God. I'm going to change him, make a prince. <laughs> Glory. This, this broken vessel right here, this... This, this messed up, broken vessel was bought. Take heed therefore to yourself. Pastors, preachers, hear me. Be careful how you deal with God's people. He told us in Acts 20, 28, Take heed therefore unto yourself to all the flock of which the Holy Ghost has made you overseer to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Every little Christian the eyes you look into, they were bought by the blood of Jesus. His blood, not... Not just silver and gold, but his precious. He not only bought the treasure, he bought the whole field. The enemy beats us up and torments us. Jesus, he just bought it all. He's going to fix it all. So, so when you pray, you got lost family. you got lost friends. you got people you're praying for. How, how are you praying for lost souls? Are you just praying that they stay hidden? I'm, I, I'm, I guess I'm kind of praying steps right now. You know, uh, Praying he'd keep them alive, he'd hide them till he save them. But I'm really praying old fashioned Holy Ghost conviction. Okay. You know, shake them up, get their attention, wake them up, touch them with your love. Let them have a real experience. You know, I'm, I'm not just in church because Daddy took me to church. Somewhere along that journey, I had my own experience. And people, people are not going to make it on Daddy's religion and Pastor's religion, they got to have their own experience got to have their own touch with God. They've got to have their own visit from God. They've got to hear the voice of the Lord for themselves. So I'm praying God send old-fashioned Holy Ghost conviction that will shake them, stir them, and wake them. So it's been some good stuff.
oh, this is this is deep stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You you should write a booklet for when we pray for lost souls on the hidden treasure. There we go, the Potter's Field. The Potter's Field. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I would love for us to find some pictures of what that looked like. Seventy-five feet. You know, you can hear measurements. Yeah. Seventy-five feet is huge. That's that's, the, his, that's our church is seventy foot wide. Oh, I thought, okay. This, this is this is only fifty. So it's. And you think I mean, just ruts, do ruts it? yeah. Well, if they're coming in for clay, they're probably bringing an ox or a horse, and mm-hmm. they're shoveling and shoveling and shoveling, and they're coming once every two or three days. And you know how quick dirt leaves. And you got twenty potters, and then they die, and their sons and their grandsons. So when you look at this, when it rains, <coughs> it's it's muddy, it's a mess. There's trash, but you can't build there. It's literally the most useless piece of land. Yeah. And if an ox had died, they'd throw it there because they didn't have no backhoe to bury it. If a donkey died, they'd throw it out there. So it stinks. Oh, yeah, it was just, it was life, just real life. And God buys a whole field. Buys a whole field. Mm -mm. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. I'd like to hear your comments on this. I wish you would share this. Tell them, Mike. Please uh, take a moment. Go back. You preached this this Sunday night, correct? <coughs> yes. Go back to this Sunday night and um, watch the live stream. Oh, the live stream's down. We'll have to re-upload yep. it. So, Brother Bill, help me remember that. We'll re-upload this. Um, <coughs> bless you, Dad. Our uh, live stream computer crashed. So, we didn't have live stream Sunday morning or Sunday night. Tonight, we're just uploading to Facebook, but we do have at least a live stream. Uh, go back and watch last Sunday night. So we'll have it uploaded. And it's, what'd you title it? Pottersville. The Pottersville. Amazing, amazing work. Yeah. Now this is this is the heart of God directly for us as Christians. And you know, I don't care what place you are in your life, there's something here convicting for you. This is touching. I want to say one more time thing. I got up this morning and I was so sick. And there's there's a young man in town. He's hours away from eternity and his his wife called and said, Brother when would you come? I told her, I said, daughter, what I've got's not catching. It's a sinus infection, but I'm really sick. She said, would you would you just come? And I walked in that house so sick, and I sat there and held his hand and prayed, and I walked out with a touch from the Lord. Mm-hmm. Praying for this young man, the Lord touched me. And I probably feel better than I felt in a week. Ain't all the way out yet, but sitting there with that precious, my heart just tore out of me. He was right with God, ready to go. So remember that precious family. We love you, thank you, and God bless you. Thank you for tuning in on this week's Kingdom Talk. And I, th- I think we might as well just title this The Potter's Field. The Potter's Field. The Potter's Field. Thank you. Please take a moment, like this, share this. Um, can, can we say announcement of what we're trying to do in a month from now? Yes, yes. One month from tomorrow, we are going to be sending off to the printers Oasis Ministries' first magazine. And it's, it's not going to be just, it's going to be nice. It's going to be glossy papers. Oh, it's, it's 16 be pages. So God has been kind to us. If you're interested in this, please let us know. We are going to be launching this soon, and we're getting thousands. So this is, I'm excited about the magazine. We love you. God bless you. God bless you.